Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu analysis video. In the morning, these videos come. In the evening, the PIB videos come, both in Hindi and English language. And today is 19th of February and it is Tuesday, so many articles are there. One of the uh, biggest numbers of articles uh, in the week. So we are going to start the lesson quickly. And these are the numbers where you can call and you, you can ask for these pen drive courses by Study IQ. And these are extremely important and very, very helpful. Next, uh, the MCQs that I gave to you yesterday. Uh, choose correct regarding carbon sequestration. You see carbon sequestration, our life is dependent on the gases which are there in the atmosphere. And CO2 is actually necessary for our life. Okay. And you see, without carbon dioxide, it is not possible that we can have our life because the heat is required there is a certain balance of temperature on the earth that is required so it is not like that that carbon dioxide is totally harmful for us but the concentration the rising concentration is actually harmful for us and that is trapping excessive heat so the excessive amount of carbon dioxide that is harmful and if we can fix this excessive carbon dioxide in some form that this is no more a part of atmosphere so that's called carbon sequestration. Now see, we can uh, sequester carbon uh, chemically. Suppose if we uh, do a, a particular uh, reaction uh, with cal calcium oxide. So this would turn into CaCO3. That means this CaCO3, calcium carbonate, is a stable compound. So this CO2, which is mixed with this calcium oxide, is now fixed. And it is not going to be a part of the atmosphere. So in the same way, if with any method biological natural or uh, artificial if any way we can fix this excessive carbon dioxide then that is called carbon sequestration so there are natural ways there are artificial ways both so that is why it is wrong that it is totally an artificial process that's why this option would be wrong and you see carbon farming it's a particular way of farming where carbon dioxide is released uh, in the farm and the excessive carbon dioxide is again taken back by some plants which are uh, being grown there so it's a specific ecosystem type of farming and that works and that is mainly used for sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide into the soil again okay so that's the thing so this is option is uh, correct and that is again correct that blue carbon is also a related term because oceans are a major sink of carbon dioxide and when these oceans they can take up this uh, excessive carbon dioxide and some sea corals and fishes and all they all are using this carbon dioxide you see when h2o is mixed with co2 the h2co3 carbonic acid is formed so this makes the water acidic and that is actually responsible for eroding these coral reefs but this carbon dioxide is fixed here so oceans are also a great carbon sequester and uh, you see in corals, their exoskeleton is made up of calcium carbonate. So they are also using this carbon dioxide. So anyhow, the carbon is sequestered. So two and three would be the correct answer here. D. Next, blue flag certification is awarded to beaches with high environmental and quality standards. After the coastal regulation zone norms, uh, this issue became important and it appeared into current affairs. So beaches with high environment and quality standards next regarding nagoya protocol you see with the convention on biodiversity which was started after the earth summit of uh, rio de janeiro in brazil this cbd was started unfccc was also started but this nagoya protocol was under this biological diversity convention in 2010 this nagoya protocol was started nagoya is a place in japan and Aichi is also a place in japan and these both are related with the biodiversity aspect he biodiversity targets we have and under this nagoya protocol it is regarding access to genetic resources and their fair and equitable sharing of benefits if any kind of benefits we are achieving out of these genetic resources different kind of uh, biodiversity then that should be universal and all people should have the equal share of it so the three is uh, correct so only three is going to be right answer here next the words that i found try them into sentences and uh, try to use them daily okay uh, whatever these words i'm giving to you daily try to use them in sentences on a daily basis now the editorials today and you see whatever editorials i am covering these are the only important editorials today one uh, 
came regarding the situation a tussle between the government of uh, puducherry and the uh, the administrator left hand governor there that uh, she is uh, kiran bedi so a tussle between them and it is the same article as we discussed the issue of uh, delhi dilemma yesterday there was also a issue of uh, uh, this particular dilemma of administration and uh, which way we should tackle the situation where a lot of uh, uh, decisions are reserved for president and uh, in most of the cases tussle is there because the governments are different the government was of kejriwal and in the center it was bjp so that tussle was there and the same tussle is there in the uh, state of uh, puducherry union territory of puducherry but you see it's a union territory but it is having a legislative assembly like delhi so that is why in both these places the same tussle is going on so it is same article no difference is there and the same case of uh, cooperative federalism that is under pressure that is the main issue and you see in the uh, quasi federal state of india without cooperative federalism the state cannot work that's a simple uh, conclusion out of it so i'm not taking that today because that would be a repetition next this article is going to be important for the gs paper 2 it is talking about the recusal requests and the forceful recusals of judges from important cases so gs paper 2 here and in this case also it is going to be important for gs paper 2 because these are the governance and administration areas okay not without an explanation judges must give their reasons in writing for recusing themselves from specific cases recusing means they are removed from those cases maybe voluntarily they are escaping from their duties or maybe they are forcefully uh, removed from uh, sitting at at those places where they are deciding about the important cases there are two conditions one is the common condition where most of the times judges they have some interest they have some uh, linkages they have some share with one of the parties who are the litigants so that is why unbiased and uh, impartial decision cannot be possible because the judges have some inclination some particular share and interest in some of the parties uh, matter maybe it's a company's decision maybe it's a particular familial uh, uh, dispute and judge is having some kind of uh, connection with that then the uh, the decision is going to be changed that decision is going to be affected if that person is not a dead honest person but that case is very rare these days that is why sometimes judges are requested that you step down from this particular case because that decision is not going to be a impartial one so that recusal is different and most in most of the cases those kind of uh, things happen and this is a common practice but you see now we are uh, looking at a different situation it's a specific unique and a very dangerous trend that is emerging now challenging the appointment of m nageshwara rao the interim director of cbi who was appointed after the uh, removal of mr alok verma and this nageshwara rao person uh, he was supposed to be a favorite of the present government and he is having some hard hardcore uh, ideological uh, inclination that was a, that was the allegation by the opposition about mr nageshwara rao so that is why he was chosen it was said so challenging the appointment of mr m nageshwara rao as an interim director of the uh, central bureau of investigation in that case you see even the chief justice of india ranjan gogoi he gave his recusal and he said mr justice sikri is going to be take up that case because i am in the selection committee of the new uh, cbi director then the justice ak sikri he recused himself he said that i am in the uh, i i i was in the panel who removed the previous cbi director alok verma so that is why i cannot take up this particular case and i cannot hear about uh, the challenge that is against the nageshwara rao's appointment so justice sikri also escaped from the situation next was the most bizarre one nv ramanna justice nv ramanna he recused himself for apparently personal reasons and what was the personal reason he gave he said that 
I have attended his daughter's wedding, Mr. Nageshwar Rao's daughter's wedding. So I cannot decide about his case and that would not be possible for me. So for this bizarre reason, he recused himself from that particular very important constitutional duty. And you see when these important people are given this much important responsibility of justice delivery and justice delivery does not mean a specific thing or a specific task. It is about maintaining and upholding the constitution and the justice delivery system of a country where poor and weak that is supported and that is saved from the tyrannous decisions. This poor person, is, it can be a person, it can be a, an organization, it can be whole country. But the important responsibility lies with these judges and these are that's why taken as some uh, lords and lords the name is given just because of this noble task that they are performing but if these people are not going to take up that duty and they are going to uh, escape from where out of some fear or uh, out of some pressure out of some favor or out of uh, saving themselves from some particular action or something like that so if that thing is happening nothing can be more perilous and more dangerous for a country and especially the country like india where it is going through a lot of changes a lot of challenges and you see the case of uh, pulwama attack is going on and you see if you compare the duties the judges duty is no less than important no less important than the duty of a soldier saving his country's borders because it is about the justice delivery system it is way more important because here if justice is failed then certainly your country become hollow and your country become hollow it becomes weak weaker and the weakest and all these uh, dangers they would follow and you could you would not you won't be able to save the country from a disaster and justice delivery system is the most basic thing and this trend that is set actually setting a very wrong precedent that is very uh, a cause of concern now see justice you dalit it is not the isolated case of mr nageswar rao case it is also regarding the Ayodhya land dispute case where Justice Yuyu Lalit, he recused himself citing a particular reason and you see these reasons, these were not given in writing. This was not in writing. That was the problem. These were very formal reasons. Last September, two judges of the Gujarat High Court, they uh, withdrew from some controversial cases and you see three judges from Nagpur bench of Bombay High Court where they refused to hear a plea filed by a uh, lawyer Satish Uke concerning the death of Judge B.H. Loya case and that was very controversial case because the death of Judge B.H. Loya was not a simple one. It was a constitutional crisis because he was dealing with a very sensitive case and it was related with the most influential people of the country today and they were under a lot of uh, concern and Mr. Justice B.H. Loya was an honest person. It was said and because he was dealing with the case very honestly that is why uh, it became very controversial that during his his tenor during his uh, duties how he uh, came to die and that was a serious thing and in that case three judges they withdrew from their uh, duties and that was giving the evidence that certainly something was really fishy in that particular case of mr uh, the judge bh loya and that was a very high profile case and you see when all from all these high profile and very grave and important cases if these important judges even the chief justice of india and the senior most judges they are recusing themselves then certainly it's a crisis it's a judicial crisis already many crises are going on in judiciary and when uh, they are deciding about not performing their duties then certainly it's a great cause of concern now see here the writer is saying taking oath of the office judges both of supreme court and high court because these are the highest judiciaries promise to perform their duties to deliver justice without fear or favor affection or ill will now here the writer quotes a person an important judge from uk enemies of dependence which is a state of being this fear actually and these uh, a favor they are enemies of 
independence and this ill will undermines impartiality means if impartiality is undermined then what is left here because justice is all, all about being partial if you are not uh, remaining uh, impartial then certainly justice is denied if the justice is denied poor is not safe and anything can happen no law and order can be maintained and no order can be maintained especially and especially in the administrative uh, decisions in administrative failures there cannot be any decision and a decision therefore on a demand for a judge's disqualification is an especially some one it's a very important one if that person decides to uh, recuse himself then that decision should also be under a lot of scrutiny and there must be a separate issue out of that particular recusal and that should also be uh, evaluated it allows parties to cherry pick a bench of their choices means if they these things they happen and uh, the recusals are unnoticed and they are unscrutinized then certainly it allows parties which are powerful to cherry pick a bench of their choice and uh, some people would certainly be working in, uh, for their favor and those people would be forming some benches and those benches would be assigned these cases and that is why uh, four judges last year they came into uh, uh, this uh, open media press conference and they said that there is something really wrong going on the master of the roster system that was regarding the same issue of assigning these cases to some unreasonable benches and the master of the roster the chief justice of India that time Deepak Mishra he was assigning these cases the, some very important cases to very small benches and that was the problem you see bigger the case more important the case bigger the bench would be so that is why it was important now see what we really have are different elucidations of a principle against an apprehension of bias certainly as I told you justice is all about impartiality justice is all about being unbiased and and you see when in the common cases when uh, these judges are requested to step down because some linkages are there so that is also detrimental if though at that time judges decide about those cases where they have some interest and it is giving the example of uk here you see in some cases where they found very very difficult to uh, select those judges who are impartial and who are not having some kind of linkages with some cases so it's a ubiquitous thing that uh, these judges they have many linkages and their connections are deep with some cases so this case is also a great concern but now the case that is emerging where these people are uh, escaping from those important grave cases and where the justice is really really crucial and it is needed that they decide about those cases if they are not performing their duties and out of some silly reason they are saying that we cannot take up those cases then it's equally detrimental nothing more than that it is really perilous for the democracy because justice delivery is the basis of democracy and that is why judiciary is separated from any kind of pressure any kind of linkages and although it's a cooperative uh, system but judiciary is separated and it is given the responsibility of interpreting the constitution so it is of the uh, utmost importance that these people they work un uh, without any kind of fear uh, fear any kind of favor or ill will if that is not possible they should step down from their from their duties that's simple and straight and you see we don't have any particular uh, set of rules or any any particular definite rule regarding that so justice chalameshwar who came out last year in the media he set some rulings here he said where a judge has a pecuniary interest no further inquiry as to whether there was a real danger or reasonable suspicion of bias is required to be undertaken he wrote but in other cases such an inquiry is required and the relevant test is the real danger test you see if that thing is known that that person that judge has some interest then it's it, there is no uh, inquiry and that person should step down and that recusal is required but if recusal is given to escape 
his or her duties then certainly there is a bigger danger and that danger should be evaluated all angles should be evaluated and that is why again and again the writer is saying that in the writing they should cite their regions and they should explain that what kind of pressure is there and what kind of fear is there in performing their duties so that we can catch the real culprits and the people the powerful people who are really cite, uh, putting those pressures then they should be exposed otherwise uh, this particular trend is going to be very uh, detrimental and really really dangerous for a country like india because this is going to uh, set a trend where nobody is going to perform their duty without any kind of fear or favor first it, it is going to be a fear then they would be uh, adjusting themselves and it would become a favor so first they are not doing their duties because of fear and after some time some new generation would come and they would adjust and they would convert this fear into favor and they would give favor to all these powerful people so ultimately judiciary has no meaning that is the thing and you see so long as judges make their choices by reducing their reasons to right for when judges choose without a rational motive without expressing their decision in writing they hurt the very idea of judicial rectitude judicial rectitude is a very unique thing and that totally is a relatable with the impartial functioning and unbiased decision making and if that is hurt there is no meaning and you see we must not allow recusals to be used as tool to maneuver justice justice at any cost should be upheld and uh, as i told you it is a it's not a simple duty like any other job it's a duty of sacrifice sometimes because cases are very grave sometimes and the issue is about the whole country and men and maintaining the sanctity of this country and this justice delivery would become so pressurized sometimes that only very brave people can decide about these cases and only those brave people are needed in the judiciary these compromising and uh, these uh, relenting and bending or accommodating kind of personalities in the judiciary they are never required so we cannot say anything about these cases because official reasons are not there but certainly the trend we can observe that is the main message of this particular article okay so judicial officers must resist all manners of pressure regardless of whether it comes from and if any kind of pressure is coming then they should expose that pressure that is the ultimate need next article is a really really grave and gs paper one is uh, uh, important here because it is the very core social issue and a black spot on our tradition on our claim of being a great country important for gs paper two and important for gs paper three sometimes it is about the health regions and uh, important uh, case studies on gs paper four and essay all angles are there all angles you see when someone claims that we are the best we are heavy having the best sanskriti best uh, organizational setup we are having the best tradition in this world and we believe in equality we have the best knowledge in the world and where you have the most inhuman systems in the all humanity whole world when you are institutionally pushing a particular people from a particular caste into drains into gutters and you are forcing them to clean these gutters and you don't care about their lives and there is no other option available for for these people no education no social security and so uh despite their life is that there is no concern even these people are bound to live in a shell and uh, they don't have any aspiration they don't have any other dimension of their lives they don't uh, bring out their grievances they have many uh, complaints but nobody is there to listen even people are not ready to talk to them why because they are cleaning the gutters so in humane this thing you see it is much more grave much more important then the border security of india because what is why the border border security is there it is to keep the country free it is to keep the people free but what is this this is institutional and social slavery and when this slavery is a real idea slavery is a real idea when people are not free 
दे आर स्लेव सम अदर कंट्री सम अदर पीपल इफ दे आर रूलिंग अस दे कैन फोर्स एस टू डू एनी थिंग दीज पीपल आर फोर्स इन टू दीज गटर्स आउट ऑफ आर सोशल सिचुएशन एंड वी डोंट केयर अबाउट दीज पीपल एंड वॉट दीज पीपल आर डूइंग दीज आर एक्चुअली मेकिंग आर लाइफ पॉसिबल विदाउट दीज क्लीन ड्रेन्स कैन यू इमेजिन योर लाइफ नो नो बडी कैन इमेजिन दियर लाइफ इफ फॉर वन डे योर ड्रेन इज चॉक्ड देन यू विल क्राई एंड द होल लोकल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर सिटी और अ पर्टिकुलर एरिया टाउनशिप they all would come crying they will uh, keep dialing phones to authorities and all that anyhow make it possible our life is totally choked and these are the rescuers at that time no other person no other authority they would come forward because you see we don't have funds for mechanization for technological upgradation for all these uh, scavenging works because very cheap labor very cheap system is available here and that's a social system and some people are outcasts and we have made them uh, to perform these uh, inhuman duties and these are not for humans these are for machines machines are easily available but we don't have funds for that and we have funds for uh, raining flowers on some crowds on some uh, rallies on some uh, people for religious reasons for political reasons we have all kinds of funds you will never uh, see any kind of scarcity of funds in any kind of rallies you will never see a scarcity a single uh, instance of scarcity of flowers or any kind of uh, uh, technological systems or any kind of other thing everything is available always all funds are available always but we don't have funds to airlift our soldiers to kashmir we don't have funds to uh, bring machines for these works and we are institutionally in this age 21st century 70 years after the independence we are pushing these people and it is under our rules it is the contractual labor even the government is involved, involved here after 1991 this system was started by the government also of this contractual labor before that it was only a, a concern of private sector and they were hiring these people on contract but now government is uh, hiring and there are no rules administrative authorities the uh, strategist gurus of uh, this country political class all are apathetic and they don't uh, see any concern and you see most importantly the citizens of india the society they don't care and uh, they will not even look at these people if somebody is working in some drain then they uh won't pass by that particular street because that is a smelly one they don't even want to look at the, their position and you see these people are forced to uh, go into these uh, uh dirt sewage uh, drains and most importantly the most inhuman one they are losing their lives you see somebody goes into drain then uh, there are harmful gases and that person doesn't even uh, become aware that he is becoming unconscious because that time that person doesn't know about that and that gas takes his or her life that happens and that is happening consistently and that is happening in the capital of our country this issue of uh, kishan lal of uh, age of 37 that person died had no safety kit with him died of asphyxiation and he was employed there by the municipal authorities that was the most bizarre one and most apathetic one they could not find his body even because that uh, dirt was so deep and a disaster response force they were uh, called and they found his body after an 8 hour search and you see the most inhuman condition sometimes they don't even find their bodies because nobody cares that person is drawn into filth in sewage material and they don't even uh, bring out his body because nobody cares about his life who cares who cares about their smelly bodies who cares about their uh dirty lifestyles because these people are real angels they are actually making your life possible and we are always there holding candles to show our great emotions but you see this inhuman uh, and this uh, particular crisis social crisis is happening in front of our eyes but we don't care because we are very selective and nothing can be worse than that if somebody makes you uh, die in hunger that is better than this condition then going into these drains but we cannot even imagine and you would you would puke 
looking at their pictures but these people are living this life daily so that is the crisis and uh, this is happening institutionally you see about the contractual work as i told you it was started by the government also after the 1991 phase and the issue of caste these people are belonging to scheduled castes and relation between caste and contract work in this sphere of sanitation is a really vicious a cycle and no other community is ready to do this work and these people they are bound to do this because they are doing it for thousands of years but and still they are doing it but still we abuse these people and uh, on the issues of uh, erection and uh, reservation and uh, you know, all these uh, uh, issues we never talk about these uh, these things which are the social realities people are dying because of their castes because they uh, were born in these castes so you just think how shameful we citizens are we social people are and we should be shameful about our tradition these people are still bound to do these duties and we always leave these, these things on administration and why they would care because these people need support these people need support of the society but we as a society we shift this burden to uh, political class that they would frame some policies and they would take care about these poor people oh their condition is so poor but we don't even talk to these people anytime i'm challenging you any one of you none of you uh, have ever talked to these poor people these poor uh, where they are living who is giving them support who is giving them uh, uh, ration who is giving them food you just suppose these people are totally untouchables totally untouchables in the societies they are declared untouchable untouchables and still they are totally untouchables and that is much more unfortunate nobody is ready to give them ration nobody is ready to give them food because people don't want to touch them nobody want to take money from these people because uh, uh, it is their touch that is uh, totally uh, painful for them so you just suppose their condition that they are living their lives but no one cares about their life and uh, as i told you it's a contractual work and it is not even a dignified contract work it is totally the wish of the employer whether they would pay these people or not because most of the times they don't pay them they would kick them and they would uh, throw them out because they cannot go anywhere nobody is going to listen to them that i am not paid for my work and i have done this thing and i am not paid nobody care that is why uh, more than 90% people they are uh, living a depressed life and they don't talk to anybody and uh, uh, they are just living their lives because they are doing the most inhuman work in the world and it is happening as a social tradition of ours that we have caste system in the great caste system of in our society in our country and we are so proud on our systems we are so proud on our traditions and you see i always say it doesn't matter how luxurious life you are living if in your vicinity the most in human things are happening then it doesn't matter that how luxurious you people are how great you people are that black spot is visible and you see the foreigners when they come to this country they always notice this thing that what kind of bizarre country this is and why these people they don't care about these life uh, these people what these people have done what is their mistake their mistake is they are they are born in these castes and we have a great caste system in our society so you should think about our caste system before you talk about any anything like a reservation or something like that you talk about that you see is their crisis is uh, bigger than the crisis of uh, the people who are demanding reservation no certainly not so that's the trouble and hardly any politician politician in office has the time or the inclination to disturb this pact and force both sides these employers and these workers they are not forced and uh, this is gross vulnerability and exploitation the gross example and the uh, most evident example of this exploitation and the vulnerability wherever in in this world you would ever see quality takes a hit a different angle with this contractual uh, labor you see this contractual labor is on, not only in this sanitation sector it is also in the education sector that is also very evident you see they are paying 7 8 6 thousand rupees a month and they are expecting that after their 10 hour work 10 hour teaching a day six days a week maybe sometimes seven days a week 
they expect that they would raise a generation of uh, students who are going to make this country great what kind of quality they can maintain in six seven thousand rupees a month you just suppose this thing what kind of quality they are giving and how much able these people are but we are our argument is that we are uh, giving employment to five to six people in one salary of a permanent person that person is going to take 50,000 rupees a month, 60,000 rupees a month, maybe 70, 80, 90,000 rupees a month. And in that particular amount, we can uh, give employment to five, six, seven, eight people a month. But we don't care about the quality. We are just fulfilling our responsibilities of formalizing things. We are doing all the formalities and it is detrimental to quality. And certainly, as I told you, machines can do a better work there, but we are employing those people because those are uh, easily available and we don't have funds because this thing we can easily ignore. Whatever we can ignore, we would certainly ignore because we don't care about anybody's life. Our luxury and our rallies are uh, all kinds of other uh, things which we enjoy out of these funds. Those are much more important to us than somebody's life. We don't care if somebody dies in the drain. Let them die. And uh, in education, I've given you the, this example and evidences are there when these contractual laborers were hired in the postal services, railways and accounts. They don't maintain the quality, but how uh, they are going to maintain the quality because they are paid five, six, seven, eight thousand rupees a month. How can they maintain the quality? That is totally inhumane. And even the Narega workers, it is said in the uh, Mr. Uh, B.S. Anu, uh, Anup Satpati's uh, National Minimum Wage uh, Committee's recommendation that minimum 10,000 rupees should be given to any person in India to survive and uh, around 50 uh, grams protein is necessary but can you have the healthy diet and can you maintain your family can you uh, give your students education within six seven eight thousand rupees a month that is totally impossible but things are going on and in this sector of sanitation the social issue is so large that it's a shameful condition for this country you see these pictures you see these pictures of uh, developed nations how they are doing these things and you see the condition of indian workers here nowhere in this world people are bound to work in these conditions and we are pushing we are actually uh, keeping them at the level of dirt these people are dirt these are filth these are sewerage for us actually because that is the real meaning of these pictures and nobody cares about them so that's the situation and uh, now we are moving to the next article it is regarding the pulwama attack and the uh, GS paper 2 and 3 these are uh, crucial papers related with this issue okay India's options after Pulwama all these things we have decided uh, sorry we have discussed that uh, there are questions which are remaining that how this thing was possible only one uh, truck was uh, bullet not bulletproof and that was attacked how this information reached up to those people and uh, this is a total intelligence failure and you see in the media in the social media we are spreading the news that we should not be involved in some kind of politicizing the matter and in telling these things from prohibiting to uh, politicizing this issue we are actually suppressing those genuine questions which should be asked to these authorities and these political classes that what happened when you said that after demonetization we have uh, a broken old chains and we have removed all the support system of these uh, militants and uh, terrorists and after that these kind of attacks they are consistently happening so that is why the writer says that now one thing is for sure any party who is going to play these cards very uh, nicely they are going to win the election this time and that's totally evident the way they are uh, cracking down on the locals of India, on the minorities of India, on the Kashmiri students of India and the, the way they are aggravating the aggression in the societies. They are actually not hitting towards Pakistan. They are uh, hardly making any robust strategies and hardly they are releasing any kind of information regarding that. But certainly they are involved in raising this uh, uh, fever and raising these emotions so that they can utilize these things into, into the upcoming elections. So now these things are giving evidence 
that what actually happened and so far Pakistan's response you see has been a blanket they are not responding to the situation Imran Khan is hardly saying anything about it and that that is totally unhelpful and helpful denial and that would remain because even in the case of surgical strike they said that that did not happen and they did not reply to these things but you see this time what's going to happen because the concern is so huge this time that we are bound to take some hard steps and when uh, we are bound to take hard these hard steps we are going to do some things what are the options available whether we do these surgical strikes again and intensive surgical strikes second air strikes we use uh, our uh, air force and we do some severe strikes on these camps and cross-border locations but in both these uh, options pakistan is gonna retaliate heavily this time that is for sure and one thing is again sure that china is gonna come for the rescue of pakistan that is certainly gonna back up because it is not like that that we are only going to be heard on the international platform pakistan is also gonna raise its voice and usa is uh, is uh, actually mired in a different kind of complex situation it is certainly gonna pay heed to pakistan's voice also this time because it has its own interest in the issue of taliban where pakistan's support is needed so usa is certainly gonna listen to pakistan this time and china is certain there for the backing up and uh, when last time it did not retaliate this time certainly pakistan is gonna retaliate so after that escalation would happen certainly we are much more capable but when this escalation is going to happen that is a cause of concern that where this war is going to stop if escalation happens because both are nuclear powers and it is the all issue of escalation and the ego wars that is going to follow after the uh, wars announcement and certainly it can be a war situation but are these things possible in this election time for india that is to be decided and that is why we need to be uh, need to remain calm in these times we need to remain silent and we need we all need to think but what we are doing we are actually doing just opposite we are aggravating the situation we are pushing the government we are not uh, giving them time to think and we are putting so much public pressure and we are disturbing this whole nation in the name of emotions and these are not going to help anyway only strategies are going to help only steps are going to help which are going to be uh, reasonable and smart but we are not giving them space and we are not giving them time to think we are pushing our forces we are pushing our government it is the very crucial time and these uh, provocation these attacks they actually happened just to bring this kind of situation because they knew that this country is typical and this country is gonna fall in this trap and they are gonna destroy their own peace and we are doing the same thing so why we are doing the same things is the is all these things are planned are, are these things happening for the political reasons now some evidences are there certainly because the way they are behaving in the media and these news channels are actually ruining this nation at this particular time they are exploiting the emotions although emotions are certainly genuine although emotions are uh, undeniable and these certainly are gonna come and they should come all these people they should show their emotions all the citizens of india because these emotions are genuine at this time because 44 people are uh, 44 soldiers their families they are devastated and we don't have any answer now we cannot do anything because situation is so complex and uh, we are not given the free hand here in the uh, in our political rallies we are saying that we have given a uh, total uh, a free hand but officially it's hardly any free hand and that is why there are emotion emotional outburst but what you are doing out of these emotions you are exploiting these emotions and you are taking political advantages you see the same day rallies were going on the next day rallies were going on next to next day rallies were going on and everywhere you are talking about these uh, attacks and these steps that we are going to take whole world should come together and uh, now it is the time to take steps the same thing you were uh, you were saying five six years back now what happened where are those 
uh, courageous talks and what you are doing why you are not uh, taking steps and if you are taking steps then why you are not remaining silent on these issues in the political rallies why you are using these uh, security issues in the political rallies that's the cause of concern america did this uh, in pakistan and they uh, took uh, obama there from about abad but they never came with a particular movie or something but we did one surgical strike and for three years we are singing a song of it so that's a reality and that is giving the evidence that what kind of nation we are and what kind of support we can give to our forces we are actually what we are doing actually we are actually disturbing the peace of our nation we should be united here but we are actually attacking the minority sections and all as they have done some kind of attacks and what you see the argument there first we should deal with the uh, uh, first we should deal with the traitors who are residing in india i am saying take action against them if somebody is supporting these attacks somebody is celebrating these attacks certainly that person uh, should be taken behind bars and the most severe action should be taken against them but there should be a priority first you attack pakistan first you take action against those uh, terror groups then you come to these people what they are talking but what you are doing you are attacking them first and so that the uh, focus is totally shifted that what you are doing against those terror groups that focus is totally gone so that is the problem and these questions like dar was a local kashmiri and you see these locals are recruited in 2013 only six locals were recruited but in uh, in 2018 more than 200 people locally they were recruited why these things are happening now what kind of stage you have brought after four years of uh, uh, rule there why these kind of situations they have become like this in the last four years the writer is saying bjp pdp government which fell last year ensured that so called soft separatist space was given to given away to militants and the use of aggressive tactics turned south kashmir's popular opinion against india so now the situation is like this whole valley is against the indian state and that is why some incidents are happening that they are celebrating these deaths these horrendous deaths in and these inhuman deaths of these uh, soldiers and these are not called shaheeds because they would not be given the status of shaheeds because these are belonging to crpf these are special forces and they would not be counted as as a shaheeds and they would not be given any kind of uh, pensions as uh, some informations are saying so if this th these things are true certainly nothing can be uh, more bizarre than that and that's why these questions are genuine we should ask these questions to authorities that these people are losing their lives and they are they would not be given the status of shaheeds how is that possible how is this different from the uh, sacrifice of our indian army and something like that how this is different they are losing their lives for the country only but why this discrimination and still that is going on not taking steps against that and uh, what you are discussing in the popular media prime time channels that traitors of india the opposition members and all or some other people what they are doing what they are seeing you are cherry picking those people because you can exploit these things in the uh, in the elections that is the problem and you see these things are evident nobody can deny that in the name of politics nobody can deny these kind of things which are happening today because these are most dangerous things these are certainly gonna bring riots in this nation and we are not caring about these and it's a intelligence failure why is that 78 buses with crpo jawans were allowed to travel in one convoy and why these were not air lifted these are grave questions and you see the options which are available isolating pakistan internationally is easier than said because china usa although they are saying that we are standing with india israel israel iran they are saying we are standing with india what about but what about china and usa stand what is it is going to be what they are going to do china put all its uh, pressure not to declare masood azhar as a international terrorist and uh, still he is roaming free and china is totally backing that up and pakistan is not do not doing anything so is that so simple for us and the options like most favored nations and all what it is going to do it is hardly going to affect pakistan situation because exporters are less there 
and you see whatever we are exporting from Pakistan there is a reason that these things are cheap if 50 uh, kilogram cement packet is 100 rupees cheaper for common Indians then if we are put uh, going to put these duties then certainly it is going to devastate these cement sellers there but it is going to be expensive for the uh, common Indians so who is going to suffer here common Indians are going to suffer here so is this thing, is thing going to work and our bilateral trade is not that much big so uh, that we are revoking this most favored nations and it is going to affect anyway but certainly that's that can be a move and uh, this Indus water treaty issue that is also not gonna help because it is not our philosophy it is not gonna our way in any time that we are going to suffocate the poor people of Pakistan because these are not the administrations these are not the in, uh, Pakistan military these are not the Pakistan government these are common people who are gonna suffer here who are going to die out of water so we can never take these kind of steps this kind of all airy talks and uh, they are only taking political advantage out of raising these issues in the media so this is happening consistently so whatever options are available covert operations can be a possibility we can take these covert operations in pakistan but that is gonna take some time and that is gonna uh, be the operations when we are going to remain silent but are we silent no we are not thinking it through we are just shouting because it is the election season and it is the top season for these people for the media houses what they are doing for the last four five years for six years seven years ten eight years in both the government's time it is the most fruitful time for them you just tell me are they showing these uh, in uh, these uh, important uh, revelations all these discussions without the advertisement they are earning the most at this particular time these media houses they are earning their best and they are earning fortunes at this time because everybody is watching news today so that is why it is pitiable a situation and most detrimental and a perilous situation for this country so all these options we need to think through whether we do any air strikes whether we do surgical strikes whether we do any precision strikes or heavy artillery we use we use rockets here or we do some kind of corporate uh, covert operations and certainly we need to talk to China regarding that because that is the only country that is gonna hinder our process and that is gonna back Pakistan so we should convince China that this time you should pressurize Pakistan that Pakistan takes action against the groups like Jashim Mohammed. otherwise it is going to be a very difficult situation between India and China also and that's for sure Okay, now the PDF I'm gonna upload on this Telegram channel and in my Facebook group and the facts we are going to discuss tomorrow. It's a huge lesson today. So thanks a lot. Keep watching. It was Amit Sen. These issues are really grave concern and important from the main's point of view.